Ready? February is in the books, so here are all the games that I completed in February. The first game was an add-on included when you got the deluxe edition of New Tales from the Borderlands, and I firstly started with Tales from the Borderlands because I completely forgot the story, and I wanted to stream the game, so I completed that, finished the story. I only did a one playthrough because there's multiple endings, and I really enjoyed it. I liked it. Uh, you basically are looking at a visual novel, for those who don't know. You just choose options, and people can die. People can have stuff happen to them, so that's the only reason why I played did the one playthrough is because you can have characters perish, and that's why I was like, let's try to make good decisions, <laughs> let's try not to be too chaotic in this game, but I had a good time with it. The voice actors were amazing in it. I believe it was Laura Bailey, and I forgot the other the character for the male lead, but they did a really good job, and I, I really enjoyed it. Next game is a puzzle platformer, little bit light. Uh, basically, it's called Stick It to the Man, and this game is where you have environmental puzzles. It's kind of like a flipping death. Basically, what you do is you'll take something as far as along the lines of you start the path for where you need to go and it could be a main path like you need to get home so you have to get home but you can't because you don't have a ride so you have to get this person who has a car to get you a ride but they don't want to give you a ride because they need maybe fuel for the car so you have to go get fuel but you have to go and find out why this person has the fuel and you have to hoard that person to something else like they want a, a cat and so they have to go find their cat so you'll do multiple puzzles to figure out where to go first, and then the, the animation is cool. I will warn people, it is a little triggering. There is very morbid humor. Uh, I walked up on some character doing something that really did take me aback for a minute, and I had to go, okay, so that's happening. And they're in the mental insane asylum. Um, they are in different areas doing different things, so you don't have the mental capacity to deal with this game, I would say wait because you definitely need to be ready for this game. It is a good puzzle game. It does make you think. It's not too difficult to where you're going to rage and, and be frustrated, but you definitely have to take some time, take some breathers because there's a lot of stuff that was I was like, whoa, that's happening? Okay, cool. So yeah, definitely one game that I would recommend for people who are ready for a puzzle and ready for morbid humor and ready for stuff like that. But it's a solid game. This game is You Are a Woman and it's called Florence. Basically, you are seeing her life played out from when she was a kid, her, her life going through basically a first relationship and finding love and then finding out that maybe that's not where your path leads and so you have to figure out life after a breakup and so it's a visual novel as well. Um, it was an indie game. I saw it was really on sale for like a couple bucks. And so I was like, I'll try it out. Did not know it was a visual novel, but it, it's a good one. It's got a little bit of a puzzle element. So you'll have something that's minor where you have to interact. Instead of like just choosing an option, you'll have to interact and put pieces of a puzzle together to make like a comet happen or something that to along the lines of like, you have to do this little puzzle to get something going for the interaction. And I like that. I like visual novels or I like games where it's a story driven game, but you still have to do something to make the story progress. It's not just like click here, click there. You actually have to do something and think a little bit before you finish it. And then that way you're good to go. So I recommend Florence. It is an indie team that was really small and this was their first game. So I'm happy to say that it was a good game. So I recommend it for anybody who's into story driven games. It's not going to be a long game. I finished it in about an hour. So if you want to play a game that's not going to take very long, try it out. The next game was on the Switch. It is a Super Nintendo title. It is Legend of Zelda Link to the Past. Been playing this for several months. It took me a while to beat this game. Um, I would play for a couple hours, try to figure it out. And I did use a guide for those who don't know. Games with like Legend of Zelda or stuff like that, I need to know where to go because the old games for Zelda games were very, very just like, you have everywhere you could possibly go. You don't know where you're going. So I didn't want to get frustrated on this. 
And I did get the Master Sword. I did get the three pendants, which I think was wise and something else. I can't remember now. It's been a little bit of time. But I did go for the Master Sword because you do need the Master Sword and everything like that. So um, for those who don't know, in Breath of the Wild, I didn't beat the game with the Master Sword because I found out that the Master Sword wasn't the end-all be-all and it wasn't 100% worth your time. And you could beat Ganon without the sword. So I just kept going, got everything I needed to get, beefed myself up as far as I could, and just kept going. This one, I did do the recommendation for the guide, and I did go through and find the sword and find the pendants and find the old man and the, the lost man or whatever he is. <laughs> it was a funny story. I did enjoy the story. Um, I liked the end where you saw everything that you did throughout the story in the credits happen when you were there. So I love the little recap. It was fun. Uh, definitely recommend for anybody who's never tried a Zelda game. I would say try either this one or try maybe Ocarina of Time. Those are two Legend of Zelda games that I do recommend that are maybe more user friendly. The NES games are still, I have, I've been trying to play them and it's just so long and it's so hard to get through because there's so many hidden stuff. At least with the Super Nintendo one, I mean, you do can go through and just explore, but I do recommend if you are lost, just look up a guide for five minutes and find it. It's not a, it's there. They had guides back in the day in the Nintendo Powers and stuff like that. So I looked up a Nintendo Power and I did look up a guide and I had fun. So 10 out of 10. The next game is also an indie game. This was on PlayStation Network, PlayStation Premiere, and it was called The Last Day of June. It's a sad game. <laughs> it, another game that I please, I, I definitely highly suggest if you're not there mentally to handle sadness or re recurring event that's bad happening over and over again, I don't recommend this game for you. Take the time to digest like, this is going to be a sad game. Basically, uh, you're a couple and you keep... It's like Final Destination, the movie. You keep seeing it's going to happen. You keep seeing that the person that you love is going to die. And you try to stop the events. There's a puzzle. This one took me a minute because I had to really figure out what to do. Because it's like, you go through the world in this part and you have to reverse time and figure out how to stop this person from causing the accident to happen. And then you realize, well, if I stop this person, but then there's another person down the line that's going to start another problem, I have to stop that person. Okay, that person's done. Okay, well, then this person's back. It's like, okay, so I got to piece all the puzzle together and stop everybody who had caused the car accident, the accident to happen, from happening. So I recommend that if you want to try it, be prepared that it's going to be sad. I had, I was, I really was crying at the end. It was a game where somebody told me it's a really good game. It's a really indie game that you would need to be prepared for it. So I did stop and try it out. I was, I was just chilling and I was like, okay, let me try it for, for I was ready. I was like, I'm, I'm ready for this one. And it's a good game. Um, I don't know if it's still on PlayStation Premiere, but I would definitely recommend to try it out. But just if you're not in the right headspace, stop, take a break and come back to it. After a couple sad games, I decided to take a break and do a fighter, and it was Soul Calibur 6. I've been wanting to play this game for a while, but for some reason I just didn't pick it up until later on in time, and I was like, you know what? It's time. I'm gonna play it. It's on PlayStation Extra uh, Premiere, and I picked it up. It's a good solid fighter. Uh, there is a story mode that I was a little... It's kind of like Mortal Kombat, and you don't keep fighting the same character throughout the whole time. You'll be this main character who is a brother-sister relationship where they're raised in a monk, like, temple, and they have to stop the evil forces that are attacking everybody and making them all attack each other. And it's a good story. I like it. You just gotta be prepared that you gotta learn other fight styles. So if you're used to one type of fighter or one type of character or one type of like, I want to be really quick or I have to be really stealthy or I have to be whatever, you're gonna have to be multiple different characters throughout this. So just 
kind of get good at every other character before you start the story. And it, the last guy was difficult. He had a couple forms. So be prepared for that. You're going to have to deal with that. And solid game. Well, like an 8 out of 10. I liked it. I had a good time. Solid Caliber is still going in the right path for me. And I will play the next one. After a Fighter, I was playing this game. And this game took me several years. Like two years to beat. I'm not lying. I would play it, stop, put it away for a couple months, play it, stop, put it away for a couple months, and I was like, you know what, I really want to see the end. I started this game, I want to finish it. Like, I, I'm trying to beat my backlog. Why is this on my backlog still? And that is Pokemon, the new Pokemon Snap. This is a game that I played when I was younger. I didn't have an N64, so I would go to Blockbuster and play Pokemon Snap for several hours, like playtime I could get in to get all the little pictures. You could print out the pictures and I enjoyed that. But this is a little bit different. Um, there is a ton of new Pokemon that I did not know because I stopped playing Pokemon games since Red, Blue, and, and Yellow and all that stuff. So I kind of was like, oh this is cool, this is cool, I like it. There is a little puzzle element to it and I like that. You have to not just take photos of them, you have to get good photos and then find hidden areas. I like the, the change a little bit of like there is a main person character, you have to figure out who they are. And then once you find out what the end happened with like a meteorite, then that leads you to like, oh, there's other higher Pokemon that you really need to find. And once you find them, you'll figure out what happened, and so you're studying and researching them. I enjoy the game. One of those games that I probably could have finished earlier, but just couldn't figure it out, because you will get stagnant at points, where there's points where you're just like, I gotta keep playing this until I get a better photo, get a better photo, find hidden Pokemon that I didn't know about, take your time, throw apples everywhere you can. If there's a like a, a hidden area, you're like, oh, why is it looks like there's a couple of hidden... Throw some apples at it. See what it pops out. And that's all I can recommend. But it's a, it's a good game. I, I enjoy it. I can see why not a lot of people would like it. Because it's completely different new Pokemon. But have fun. Take some photos. It's a simulator, in my opinion. After that, I finished a shooter that took me about a month to beat. Uh, this is G.I. Joe Operation Blackout. It was on the Switch. And I picked it up because... I haven't played a G.I. Joe game in forever, and I was like, you know what, let's see what this is all about. It's a shooter, it's a third person shooter, but it's very glitchy. <laughs> I would think I'm all done with all the area, and there would be a hidden AI character from the opposite side stuck in the wall. Because you play as G.I. Joe and then you play as Cobras. So you'll be Cobras or G.I. Joes or whatever, and you'll have like the... The pawn characters is what I call them, like the little minions that are running around trying to uh, dis distract you from the main character you have to battle. It's kind of stagnant. It's not a great shooter. I'm glad I didn't pay a lot for it. It's basically, you would just go to the mission, go and clear out some guys, stop whatever, push this button, wait for that button to fill up whatever it needs to do, then move on to the next one. Then you're a tank, you're driving a tank, and... It was good for the first like three levels because they're like, oh, that's so cool. But then when you saw that the rest of them are the same, just copy and pasted, but just with different characters, different scenarios, it, it got boring. I will admit. Like I was like just trying to finish it because I was like, I really want to see the end. But in very 80s fashion, everybody just kind of like eventually escapes. So like if you're a Cobra and you're trying to get this person, they're going to escape. If you're trying as a G.I. Joe to get this person, they're going to escape. So it's like... <laughs> just just have fun with it just do the mindless shooting and enjoy it um yeah not a great shooter but get it cheap after that i went back to a fighter and that is ultra street fighter 4 i wanted to play street fighter 4 but i just didn't have a playstation 3 and i really didn't pick it up anywhere else and i was just like you know what i'll wait i really will wait I heard some negative things about Street Fighter 4 and 5, and I kind of just went, eh, maybe it's just time to let go of Street Fighter and just play the old ones only. So, when it was free, on the pass, for PlayStation, I finally picked it up, finally downloaded it to my system, and played it. 
Sadly, it crashed on me one time. I don't know why. Maybe it's because it's converting from a PS3, PS4 to PlayStation 5. But after it crashed, I reloaded it up and thankfully my save was still there. But there's other games that I've had that happen where my save just was deleted and I just kind of like deleted the game because I was like, I wasted like so many hours. I'm done. But it was still there. I played it all the way through. I played as Sagat. I wanted to play a character that I normally don't play. I wanted to challenge myself. And this is not an easy one either. Street Fighter games have never been easy. So I tried Sagat. Took me forever to get through your rival section because Ryu is very difficult. <laughs> He's like a middle average character that can beef up and really destroy you at the end. The ending wasn't as hard as that the rival fight. So the ending was good. I liked it. I like the story. I like the little ending that they give you at the end where it's like uh, see him where he goes and see that he's not really that bad. So I had a fun time. Enjoyed it. Try it out if you have PlayStation Premiere. It's worth your time. Then I wanted to go to Classic. I was kind of in the middle waiting for something to happen like I always do and I decided to play Super Mario Bros. I wanted to go through it again. And I did use warps, for those who don't know, you can warp through. And I was just like, because I had a like about an hour to spare, and I know this game can be beaten within an hour if you use warps. So went through, played it all the way through, and I had a fun time. It's a great game. Um, I played it on the Switch because I wanted to just grab it and just play it easier and wait than have to go get the console, put it in there. But I enjoy it. I always go for the quest to find Mario's love. Which, I don't know why Bowser keeps stealing her, but hey, it's, it's part of the game. I have fun with it. I wish I could play Duck Hunt, but sadly I can't. So hopefully one day they uh, add it to the list of games you can play. So tweet them at that. Tell them. You have the capability of making it happen. Let it, let's do this. Let's get Duck Hunt on there finally. And I decided to play another backlog game. And this is because Silent Hill 2 is on the way. And I played Silent Hill Shattered Memories. This is a new take on the first game. So it is a remake, but it takes inspiration from Silent Hill 2, Silent Hill 4, and a little bit of twist on there is no combat. You can't shoot anything. So you are being psychoanalyzed by a psychiatrist and your choices dictate what happens in the game. So you'll be playing and all of a sudden he'll say, Color in this this family, this house. Color in with the colors that you like. Then it could be like, who is good and evil in this story that I just told you? Rank them based on your, your perspective. And I really enjoy the game. I will say I got lost and had to keep replaying the section where you had to parkour basically and get through the, the characters. And I like the new take on that it was cold instead of just like ash was falling from the ground. It was like a snowy area and you use your phone which because it was a Wii game first so you would use your phone to call in different things where Silent Hill 4 comes from because in the room you could call numbers and see what would answer like a person or a spirit would answer and the one take that is a little bit different is he sees somebody who looks like his wife and that's where the Silent Hill 2 inspiration comes in and you keep seeing somebody that is not his wife, but looks just like his wife. And you have to take on that and realize it's exactly like Silent Hill 2. Great game. I liked it. I just wish that there was an easier way to deal with the parkour section. But find a spot where they're not at and then just open up the map really quick. And then just run like hell. Just burn some rubber. Shit's getting real. Take off. <laughs> That's all I recommend for anybody. After that, I wanted to play one of the GBA games that was recently released on the Nintendo Switch Online, and that is Mario Kart Super Circuit. This is a fun one. Um, there is a little bit of change. It was a little bit hard to see everything in the track because they expanded the little things, so it did take some getting used to with the mechanics change and using the, the trigger on top instead of the other side and learning what button was to throw your stuff because it was a little bit different but i enjoyed it i had a fun time with this one i did finish all the races it did take me a little bit of time because there was a new mode part where it was like a special cup so like you had to finish the special cup and you had to finish like all the races so got gold on all the races finished all the special cups whatever that was and it, it was a good take on it i played as mario as always um i don't know if i would ever play it again 
I, I prefer like the console version, like Super Nintendo and the Switch version. But I did like it. I did like that I got to play it for free because it is going up in price every day. So it's nice to see it finally on there. And the last game that I played was Mario Tennis for the N64. Fun game. This took me a little bit of time. I started playing it as soon as it dropped on the N64. And I would get so far into the tournament and then lose. So I would have to like keep playing it again and again and again. And I finally got it done. I finally beat all the cups that you had to beat to get to the ending. And I thought there was more. Being honest, I thought there was like four or five cups before you got to the end. And when I was like waiting for the next one, I'll say, congratulations, you won. I was like, oh, snap, <laughs> they're all done. We only had three. So three cups and you're done. Hell yeah. And there you have it, everybody. There is all the games that I beat. I beat 13 in total for the month of February. Let me know. What were some highlights of February for you if you're keeping track of your gaming? I had a blast. This was a good mix of different styles of games. And it was fun to finally play some PlayStation games that I had missed out on. So thank you for watching. If you're new, please give it a like. And if you check out some other videos, hit the subscribe button. Helps out the channel. Bye, everybody. Linda the Gamer Gal. She's here, she's playing games. Linda the Gamer Gal. She's here, she's playing